Hello, what you have just seen is called a long exposure time lapse, and I'm going to show you how you can create one for yourself using a Skywatcher Star Adventure Star Tracker. So in order to pull off such a long exposure time lapse, you either need to have a advanced firmware downloaded into the Skywatcher Star Adventure, the first edition, the original one, the one that I have, or you need to have the upgraded one, the version 2i. That one you can control using the mobile app, but I'm going to focus more on the original one, the one with the advanced firmware. And in order to install the advanced firmware and get around it, I actually have a separate video already on my channel. If you haven't watched it, it will be linked down below in the description. So what you need to do, of course, you need to find an interesting location. And while you are there, you need to set up your tripod. You need to remove the ball head from the tripod, mount the base of the Star Adventure to the tripod. Then you need to make sure you actually level it and then mount the actual Star Adventure main unit onto the base. Then tilt it upwards 90 degrees. Then you need to take the wide angle attachment, this little green thingy, and then pop it into the mounting platform. Then you need to screw on the ball head on top of that and then you can mount your camera onto the ball head. That way, with this orientation of the Star Adventure, you basically have a rotating panning head. So you have this platform, which is leveled with regards to the horizon, and it will rotate either counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on what you are after in your time lapse. Then, of course, you need to take your camera and you need to figure out your exposure settings. So just take a couple of test shots and figure out what kind of exposure do you want. You need to go full manual. Of course, you're going to be taking a series of shots in a time lapse. So you need to have a consistent exposure exposure between those shots in order to create a smooth video. And how this long exposure time-lapse mode actually works and how is it different from a regular time-lapse mode? Because in the regular time-lapse mode, the rotating head of the Star Adventure is just constantly rotating. So your camera mounted on the Star Adventure will be just constantly moving either in this direction or in that direction. And every couple of seconds, you will be taking a shot with an intervalometer and that way you can just stick those images into the final time-lapse. But with a long exposure time lapse where each shot lasts a couple of seconds if you had a continuous movement of your rotating panning head which is the star adventure in my case you will have a motion blur in every single shot so the long exposure time lapse is a very clever thing in the star adventure and it means that for every single shot the star adventure will actually stop then take the photo which can last a couple of seconds and then rotate a little bit take another photo rotate a little bit take another photo, etc, etc, etc. So each individual shot will be crisp and clear. And if you stitch it all together, you will have a continuous movement looking pretty cool. But now the most important question is what kind of settings do you set on your Star Adventure to get the desired look into your time lapse? Because there are five configurable parameters that you can set on your Star Adventure and it will affect its behavior. The first parameter is the number of shots that it will take. The second parameter is the angle. So how many degrees in the angle it will rotate and this angle if you set it for instance for 90 degrees it will just go 90 degrees and then back back and forth back and forth 90 degrees so if you want to create a time lapse which can just like loop around you can totally use the angle settings for that the third parameter is the speed of rotation how fast the star adventure is actually rotating for the time lapse and then the other remaining two is the exposure time and the interval in seconds between consecutive shots and honestly, it's a little bit complex to kind of figure out the exact values of those five parameters if you have some time lapse in mind. And if you look in the manual of the advanced firmware for the Star Adventure, the original one, there's an appendix on one of the uh, last pages where you can figure out what kind of equations do you need to use in order to figure out those five configurable parameters. But those equations could be quite confusing. And even for me, which uh, I consider myself to be kind of a math savvy person, it took me a while to figure out how it actually works. So what I did, because I don't want to bore you with those gory details of those math equations, what I actually did is I created an interactive spreadsheet that I will actually be sharing with you for completely free. You can download this spreadsheet and start using it yourself by 
finding it somewhere in the description of this video. And in this spreadsheet, you just input some of the parameters of the output time lapse that you wish to achieve. And then it will tell you what kind of values of those five configurable parameters do you need to set on your Star Adventure. All right, so here's the spreadsheet. And as you can see, you have a lot of cells in this table, but you are mostly interested in inputting the values of those five things right here. And it will tell you what kind of values of the five configurable parameters those are these parameters right here do you need to set on your star adventure so the first thing that you need to figure out is the desired video length the output time lapse that you are going to produce how long in seconds do you want this time lapse to take and i would usually recommend this value to be around 10 seconds i don't think any time lapse longer than 10 seconds unless there's something super interesting happening in the scene after 10 seconds, your audience is going to get bored. So I think 10 seconds is a good ballpark. So let's input 10 seconds here. And then the next one is the video frame rate. I am used to uh, editing in 24 frames per second. So I'm just going to input 24 right here. And then for the exposure time, I think the artistic aesthetic that I'm looking for is I don't want those exposure times to be too long because I want those streaks of light from the cars moving around my town to be noticeable, but I don't want them to be overwhelming in every single shot. So I think the exposure time of around five seconds should give me the dynamics that I want in my time lapse. Then the next parameter is the total angle of rotation. And again, this depends on what kind of effect are you after. Maybe you want 180 degrees, maybe even 360 degrees. For what I did, I was using an ultra wide angle lens. So what I wanted to do is to go 90 degrees. So I would start it being sort of from the center of this road that you saw in the beginning of the video. I just rotated my camera sort of 45 degrees in this direction. And then I have inputted 90 degrees in my equation. So it would go 45 to the middle and then 45 to the left side, completing a sort of this kind of a cone. So let's input here 90 degrees. And then there is a last parameter, which is called panning time between shots. And this is pretty much the time that the Star Adventure will be spent panning. So doing the rotation between the shots. And this value has to be set in seconds the minimum value is one second according to the manual and if you want to have a very smooth time lapse i would recommend to leave it at one second but if you want to make a very like 360 degrees or something like this maybe i would recommend to use something higher than one second in order to have a faster rotation but i just left it at one and now what we see here are the five configurable parameters that you can set on your star adventure the number of shots that you need to take is 240 the speed should be set to 16. The speed is defined in minutes, and this is defined in how many minutes does it take to complete a full rotation. I also talked about this in detail in the other video about the advanced software, sorry, advanced firmware for the Star Adventure. So if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend it again, link in the description. And then we have the angle, which is of course 90 degrees. This is the same thing that we have input right here. The exposure time is going to be five seconds the way I want it. And the interval is going to be seven seconds because five seconds is the exposure time. Then one second is reserved for the stabilization time. This is again, something that I read in the manual. And then one second of the actual panning, the thing that I have input in this cell. But we have a little bit of a problem because I cannot freely input the speed of rotation in my Star Adventure in one minute increments. The way you can set it, at least on the old Star Adventure, the one that I have right here with me, if you are the owner of the 2i and you have more granularity in the speed of rotation, please let me know down below in the comments. But with this one, the way you can set it is you can set it in tens of hours, hours and tens of minutes. So the smallest increment that you can set is 10 minutes. So the fastest is 10 minutes per revolution. The second fastest is 20 minutes per revolution, etc., etc. So my value that I have calculated in the spreadsheet, which is 16 minutes, needs to be rounded either down or up. And I would always recommend to round it up, which means that it would take 20 minutes to complete a full rotation, which means that my final time lapse would be a little bit longer in order to complete the 90 degrees panning. Because if you have a slightly longer time lapse, you you can always just speed it up in post-production, but if you have a slightly shorter one, if you have 
floored it down to like uh, 10 minutes per revolution, so a faster speed. That way you would end up with a time lapse that is less than 10 seconds, and if you want to stretch it to 10 seconds, you would end up with jarring motion. So I always recommend to round this value up, and that's why what you can see in this recommended column is this is rounded to 20 minutes. And then if you move upwards here, you can see how it affected the, the output sort of settings, so the desired video length now with 20 as my speed, 20 minutes of per rotation, is going to be 12.5 seconds. Again, not a big deal, I can speed it up in post-production, of course, the frame rate is the same, the exposure time is the same, angle of rotation is the same, and the panning is also the same. So the only thing that is affected right here is the video length of the output time lapse, and also right here at the bottom you can see the total calculated acquisition time. So the in the ideal conditions it would take me 28 minutes to complete the entire time lapse to shoot it, but with this rounded up uh, speed, which makes the speed a little bit slower, it will take 35 minutes to complete the time lapse. And I took those values, I have inputted them into my star adventure, I have I, I went out to the field, I, I did the time lapse, and it took pretty much exactly 35 minutes to complete the time lapse. And in order to begin shooting, you basically need to uh, point the camera at the starting position, then you need to set the direction of rotation, and that thing you can set by uh, setting the hemisphere switcher right here, so the south hemisphere is going to rotate clockwise and the north hemisphere position right here is going to uh, rotate counterclockwise but you need to sort of from the position of looking through the polar scope so if you have it like this and you are looking at your scene from this direction if you set it to s the the south position it is going to rotate from right to left the way that i did for my time lapse and if you set it to n it is going to rotate in the other direction and then of course to begin shooting you need to connect the snap port right here in the Star Adventurer with your camera using an appropriate cable and then set the camera to bolt mode and the Star Adventurer will take care of everything else. It will just start rotating and taking shots and you just need to wait a bit until it is finished. One thing that you actually need to be aware of is that the exposure time that I ended up with was not exactly 5 seconds. It was a little less than 5 seconds and more specifically in my situation it was 3.8 seconds per exposure. I don't know if this is caused by the camera and having some sort of delay in the remote shutter release cable or maybe it's caused by the Star Adventure for some reason. I don't know, you can factor that in into your equations and you can of course just test it out. Maybe your unit and your camera will not have this kind of discrepancy but at least it was consistent so it was not five seconds for every single shot but it was consistently 3.8 seconds for every single shot and this is again not that big of a deal because I can then just uh, brighten it up a little bit in post-production and sync it across all of my images and the important part is that it is consistent so I will not have any fluctuations in the in the brightness of the image throughout the entire time lapse. However, the interval that I have that I had, which was seven seconds, was spot on, very accurate. Every single shot was created uh, seven seconds apart from each other. And then of course, in order to create the final time lapse, the post-production is very simple. You just need to download all of those images, just load it up into Lightroom or something, develop it the way you want, uh, sync it up across all of those images, uh, export them as JPEGs, load it as an image sequence to Premiere Pro, for example. This is what I I use and what I do and then you can do some final tweaks in your framing maybe color grading if you like and then export and voila you have a pretty cool looking long exposure time lapse if you are going to go into the field and try it out for yourself feel free to tag me on Instagram I want to see what you create with your uh, long exposure time lapse if you wish to tag me I would be more than happy to take a look at your work if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below I would really appreciate it and also if you want to see future videos about photography about what you can do with the Skywatcher Star Adventure and of course the astrophotography stuff because this is mainly what this unit uh, has been built for. Definitely consider subscribing to my channel, I'll be posting a lot more content. Of, of course you can check out in the meantime my previous videos about some subjects with regards to this tracker right here, I think you would enjoy them. See you next time, hopefully clear skies and bye bye.